everybody, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Q binding different abilities and spells to remap them to different keys and key presses on your keyboard just to improve some of your gameplay and, and involve your keyboard a bit more to improve your performance by preventing you from wasting time from moving your mouse around on the screen and clicking the ability to get it started, right? Uh, so I'm going to walk you through a couple steps. I'm going to talk you through the Q binding process. I'm on a brand new character here that I've insta leveled to 50 today. And I'm going to show you how to map your key binds, how to, how to look those up. Just a quick side note here. The examples that I use today are really just examples. I don't use all of these on a normal basis. I do use the functionality of what I'm teaching you, but I don't specifically bind these spells or styles to the same keys that I do in normal gameplay. These are really just for example and showcasing something for you to today. First, we're gonna do swapping to a melee weapon, then doing a side style, and then we're gonna try and equip the harp again so that we lose as few chances as possible. We're gonna learn how to use Qbind. So what are Qbinds? Qbinding is, if you type slash Qbind, you're gonna bring up a, a map list of where all your keys are Qbound to. And this is separate from the slash keyboard function. So now that you know how to see the list, we're going to talk about how we're going to bind these to certain keys. So I have this to show you a specific example and, and what all the different numbers mean. I have my normal quick bar. So this is quick bar one, my default quick bar. And I'm going to mouse wheel it back to bank number 10. Okay. So in this example, the bank number is your first number in your quick bind. So you Q bind. And then we're going to do the number of the bank, which is 10. We're going to do the slot number, which is 1. And it's what default quick bar is it? Is it quick bar 1? Is it quick bar 2? Or is it quick bar 3? So it's quick bar number 1. We're going to do that. And the very next key we press is going to be where we bind this key. So I'm going to bind this one to F2 just for the sake of these examples. The next style that we want to cube bind here is our side style. So we're going to cube bind 10, which is the bank number. 2, which is the slot number, and the default quick bar, which is 1. And we're going to map that to F3. Now to map the re-equipping of the harp, we're going to map this one to F4. So we're going to Qbind 10, 3, 1, and we're going to do that to F4. So now if I bring up my list again, you're going to see where I have these. If you ever need to see where you have something, look up if you haven't played a character in a while. So now if we move over to this, I'm gonna, I have a dummy here targeted. What I'm going to try to do is, with these on Qbind, I'm going to try to use these hotkeys that I've created to side style, snare, and re-equip. Boom. And you can see I perform the animation and my harp is still out. Let's see how many chance I get back. There's all four of them again. So now that I've shown you how to save space by mapping buttons uh, that are close to each other, now what if I what if I showed you how to save a little bit more space and gave you an example of how to combine mez and AOE mez on two different keys and then the variations of them on the same keys plus a modifier. So in this example, I'm going to use Single target mez and AOE mez will be bound to R and T, and then the insta version of single target mez will be shift R, and the insta version of the AOE mez will be shift T. Um, knowing our previous example, it's bank 10. This is going to be slot 4, and default quick bar is 1. And we said we were going to bind this to the button press of R. So let's go ahead and bind that to R. And by the way, if I didn't show you this before, if you hit enter and then you hold shift and up, you can bring up the previous thing you've typed to make this mapping process easier. So I've changed it to 10, 5, 1. That's going to go to T. We're going to go back and we're going to do 6 and 1, which is the insta version. This is going to be shift plus R. So you hold down the shift button and then you tap R and it'll bind that combination of the key press. So now we're going to return and shift up. 10, 7, 1. We're going to bind that to shift. Let's try it out. So 
I've only shift F1 to bring myself up. You can see we have none of those spells on the active quick bars here. First, let's try a single target mez over here. It's going to be R, the mez lands. So now we target this. We're going to do shift R. That's the insta mez. You saw no cast appear on the screen. Both those mezes landed. Okay. So now we have the AoE mez. Eh, we'll probably go do this over here. See how much of it lands. That's T. And if we run over this way, do Shift T, and we've got the AOE mess over there on the right, and we've got the Insta mess over here on the left. So, in the previous examples, I've shown you how to use Bank 10 of Quick Bar 1. Now I'm going to show you how to map these keys to other. Uh, quick bars, other default quick bars, and other banks of those quick bars, just so you don't get in the habit of just using one bank, uh, and so that you know that you can keep buying these things from various banks to keep uh, more space free. If you don't know how to bring up the second and third quick bar, by the way, slash quick bar two, and I believe it's zero, makes it go away. I shift up plus return from the last uh, thing just to break this easier and one will turn it back on okay so if you wanted to do the same thing with quick bar three and one that makes it active zero makes it unactive you can also access these things in the options but i like to use uh, cubines and hot presses just to make things easier so in this example we're going to show you how to use i'm going to teach you a couple things here we've already got the weapon map to f2 so we hit F2 and we've got up and brought up our weapon here. We're going to be attacking the dummy, but I'm going to show you how to use a side style, which I've already shown you how to do, but we're going to back it up with the anytime style, which comes from our champion line. So say I have pets on me and I want to clear those. I might use my champion ability, which is resilience, which is going to be a bit of endurance, but it also has a chance to proc 30 heat damage. And we're going to we're gonna pair that up with a backup style. And we're going to stick to the dummy, and we're going to show you how uh, backing up your melee styles will be helpful in addition to having them Q-bound. Uh, we're also going to show you how to do DDs while you're doing that as well. So we're going to map the DDs here first. So we're going to do Q-bind, bank number 10, slot number 8, key press, uh, I'm sorry, Q quick bar 1. And we're going to bind that to F5. We're going to do our second DD, which is in slot 9, quick bar 1, bank 10, and we're going to bind that to F6. Now we're going to do an example where we're going to do some spells and items that are on quick bar 3, bank 3, and we're going to, we're going to put those near each other as well. In this example, we're going to do the side snare on our minus button and the end of time we're back up from the champion abilities on our equal button. So we're going to do this. This is bank three of quick bar number three. So you can see quick bar three, the modifier for this is control. So you can access these doing control five, control six. In this example, I'm going to show you how to cue bind them. So it's going to be three, five, three. That's quick bar, uh, or I'm sorry, bank three of quick bar three. It's going to be slot 5, and then again, the last number is the quick bar number. So it's bank 3, slot 5 of quick bar number 3. And we're going to bind that to the minus button. And we're going to do that with slot number 6. And we're going to do that to the equal button. And now let's go ahead and try these out. So you can see I'm going to make sure none of these are on the active quick bars that we have up. I'm stuck to my target. Now you can see if I hit the minus button, that's the side snare. And if I hit the equal button, that's the any timer. So how do we do these things two together? Okay. So if we're just stuck to a target and we're swinging and we're rotating around the target and we still want to use styles, I can press them one after another. And no matter what position I'm in, the right cube or right style will go off. So in this example, what I'm doing is I'm pressing the side snare first and I'm setting the any timer as a backup. By doing this, if I'm in position for the side snare, it's going to automatically attempt the side snare. If I'm outside of the arc for the side snare, it's going to automatically attempt to do the any timer.
Now let's do it while stacking our TDs. There's TD1. TD2 got resisted. Gotta wait about three seconds for our DDs. There's one. And second one got resisted again. So in the final example of this video, what I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to combine a little bit of all the different things that we've learned how to do in this video. I'm going to show you how to bind cure disease to the A button, as well as champion level diseasing an enemy target to shift A. And then another button that's close by S is going to have the Q bind for a greater here, which is something we might find ourselves using right after a cure disease on a target that's taking big damage. So to do this, we're going to go ahead, Q bind, it's bank three, it's slot number seven of quick bar three. So we're utilizing that skill set. We're going to bind that to A. We're going to use enter plus shift up, which is another thing we've learned in this video. We're going to backspace and we're going to do slot 8, quick bar 3. That's our champion level disease. And we're going to bind that to shift plus A. So that's another skill set we learn in this video. And in the final example, we're going to do 9, quick bar 3. And that's going to be the S button. So both these, all these abilities are, are bound near each other. I guess to expand upon this greater, we probably could have done a major heal on A and a greater heal on shift A. So let's go ahead and put these things to use. So in this example, shift A would be champion level disease. A would be cure disease. And then S for the greater heal right after. I haven't taken any damage. Well, let's go ahead and take some. So say an example, your target was taking damage, and it also happened to be diseased. You would do cure disease, as well as a greater heal, right after. Well guys, thank you so much for stopping by to check out the tutorial today. Uh, just a recap of everything that we've learned. We've learned that we can F2, F3, F4. We can re-equip our weapon. We've learned that we can single target mez. We've learned that we can AOE mez. We've learned that we can insta mez. We've also learned that we can insta AOE mez. We've learned that we can bind DDs. We also learned that we can stick to our targets, equip our weapon, as well as set up backup styles. And we've also learned that we can disease, cure disease, and greater heal follow-ups. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope I've taught you a couple things that can free up space on your quick bars as well as improve performance by not having to stumble for where on your many multitude of hot bars your spell or style might be. And to get these things closer together as well as show you how to just utilize your keyboard more in general, how to keep things closer to each other using the F2 functions, uh, keys that you might have on your keyboard, or using shift modifiers to use a spell and a variation of that spell on the same button, or, or a different type, you know, whether it was cure disease or an attacking disease, whether uh, it was a single target mez or an insta version of the mez. It's able to map and save space and keep everything close to each other so that you could do everything all within uh, a short stretch of your fingers and not tax yourself. I know if you're like me, you're probably getting a little bit older. Carpal tunnel has started to set in from all the video gaming that you're doing. Or maybe you're just a little bit slower as you've aged. Or maybe you're just looking in general to be a better player. And hopefully this tutorial helped you in one way or more than one way.